Hi guys, Mike Roo here. This is my Becoming Comparu episode 4. In this episode I managed to get the quest cape and loads of other gains, so let's get right into my progress towards comp now. Starting out with the Fremenic Sagas, you have to get them all done with the Unabridged Sagas complete fully in order to get that achievement of comp ticked off. There's five different ones and they're all pretty easy except for one. One of them can be a little bit annoying and I'll speak about that in a second. I managed to get all of the Unabridged Sagas first time except for one. This one I had a previous best score when I was doing the hard tasks because you had to just complete one. So I fully completed this one and then I fully completed the other three. And when it came to the last one, I could not get the unabridged version on the first try because I didn't quite understand what it meant by the achievement of having the memories fully unlocked. So what it means is that you have three probes and you need to move your mouse around to get it super accurate and as soon as it starts flashing really heavily, you want to turn your sounds up and listen very carefully. You want to make sure your circle ring is exactly where that probe is having to be pressed. If you press it anywhere else, you'll only get half a memory recovered rather than a full one. So you need to be very careful and make sure you recover the full memory every time you click directly in the middle when it's making loads of noise and flashing like crazy. Because if you don't fully get every single memory then you don't get the unabridged complete. I managed to do it on my second time round but my god was it frustrating having to get it directly in the middle. Especially when it came to the last memory you had to recover and you had them all right before you just really really didn't want to mess up. We did it and we got the unabridged saga done and we got the achievement and now we're 60 out of 69. So it was time for some mage training arena and I started with a telekinetic grab. It's very easy, you just run around and telekinetic grab the statue so it goes on top of the pressure plate to go to the next one. And once you've done like five you get like eight bonus points or something so you get some extra points here and there. You need to get 200 but you get 10% off for the hard tasks of the desert so you need 180 to get bones to peaches with the telekinetic grab point. So you need 180 telekinetic grab points towards bones to peaches. It took me about an hour and a half maybe two hours to do this. It's quite slow but it's very easy and kind of chill and I enjoyed doing the puzzles myself really. They're not hard at all but it's pretty entertaining to do. It keeps you thinking and it actually requires you to do stuff so it's not bad. The next one was the enhancement. All you do is go to the enhancement room, pick up all the dragon stones on the floor, use onyx enchant on them for loads of points, hop worlds and repeat the process and keep picking up those dragon stones. Enchant them with the onyx jewelry for the most points and you just do this over and over and over again until you get 1,800 enhancement points as you need 2,000 and you get 10% off for the tasks. The next room was the Alkin room. This one took the most time, probably took me about two and a half hours. It's just so long and tedious to do. But there is some method to it. Whenever it swaps, if you search one of them and you see what you get in it, any of them that are higher on the list, you go clockwise for. And anything lower on the list, you go anti-clockwise for. The only downside is there's three with nothing in it as well. So those ones can be a bit hard to guess where things are. But for instance, this one that I'm on right now is Leather Boots. If I had to do Adamant Kite Shield, I could go to the one underneath of it. And I know Adamant Kite Shields are guaranteed in there because it's next on the list. The list doesn't change and the order doesn't change. They just move around here and there, but they don't actually swap positions. Hopefully I explained that quite well. For example, if I'm looting from the Addy Kite Shield, I know the one above it is going to be Leather Boots and the one underneath of it is going to be an Addy Helm because that's what's on the list. 270 points. <laughs> the last one is the graveyard. This one's very, very easy. You do bones to bananas. And if you have a look, there's scores for each different bone. So it has a one, a two, a three, and a four next to the bones on an order. This is how many bananas they give you every time you enchant them. So if you manage to get a lot of those four bones, then you're going to fill up your inventory very easily and you don't need many of them. Whereas if you get a lot of the bones that are one, then you're going to need quite a few of those in order to then turn them all into bananas. Just keep an eye on the ones you're looting because when you do bones to bananas, you're going to get more bananas than what you have in bones. So don't get like a full inventory of bones because you're wasting your time. This took me about half an hour to get all the points I needed. We're good. Now we just need to do the hard tasks in the desert and we can buy bones to peaches. I remember doing this on my own man, just chucking the train at Kenneth and being like, he's okay now. And it's like, how does this work? There we go, chuck the train, and he's fine. I really don't understand this quest. We're sorted though, easy. 
Kenneth Concerns is done. That's a requirement for the RD toss. Before Kenneth's Concerns, I did Dealing with Scarabus, which is another just easy quest to get out of the way. I also done Do No Evil. That one took a very, very long time, and it was probably the least enjoyable quest I've ever done. I done Grim Towers. That was actually very enjoyable. It was funny. There was those little fairy towers mixed in with it. That was good. It's pretty cool, this, this weird thing with the brain. It's pretty neat. Just gonna stab it up. The graphics on that is so nice. I put so much effort into this just for this one little part of the quest. Good job, Jay. This is actually kind of fun. I'm playing like battleships, just shooting these zomboats. Pew pew! I managed to do a clockwork syringe quest and then it was time for a break from questing and some more tasks. I started doing the higher end desert tasks and that requires a lot of Dominion Tower, so I'd done some climber mode. The intros for each fight is kind of cool, but it wastes so much time. So the first thing I did was go and turn off the intros. So I skipped the intros and victory scenes just to speed it up. I managed to get to like 85 in endurance mode or something. And then I could claim the first little bonus, but I have to do every single one of these achievements in order to get the elite task done as I need a stage four banner. The only ones you don't need to do is the very last page because they're very hard and they don't count towards it. Doing some more endurance mode, I got two more journal pages. I'm at about five out of 20 now. I need a lot more to go before I even think about doing these tasks. This is gonna take a while. I did an easy rune doku for the medium task of the desert. So now it's just the hard and the elites. So I need dread nips for the hard and I need the banner for the elites. That meant it was time to go do climber mode. I need to suffer every single debuff once and reach like wave 15 in climber mode. Those two achievements are needed for the stage four banner. So I just did the climber mode over and over again, just taking all the debuffs. It wasn't too hard because you don't really need food or stuff like that that much unless you get a very hard boss. So for the most part, I just went and killed the bosses over and over again and took as many debuffs as I can so I could suffer nearly all of them the first time round. Then the second time round, I managed to get the achievement done by getting the rest of the debuffs that I actually needed that I didn't get in the first time. I also obviously got the achievement for getting to wave 15 in Climber and stuff like that. Claiming some loot from the Climber mode, I got two more pages. We're at 7 out of 20 pages, I believe, so 13 more to go. Now we have the whole first page unlocked. We just need to do page two, three and four for the stage four banner. I did a test with climber mode to see if it was better for pages, but I believe going to like wave 100 in endurance mode is far better for pages. I suffered every single debuff all at once and then I got Nomad and died to him because it was just impossible to kill him really. But I only got one page for that and I get like four or five going to wave 100 in endurance. So I think I'm just going to stick to doing that. One other thing I did need to do was all the special missions. So I started off with the chickens and then done all of the rest of the special missions. As that's another achievement you need to do for the stage four banner. These special achievement things are very easy and they're just fun things really. So that got done nice and quick. I actually got a journal page from doing the chickens. Hey, that's nice. Not that many more left to go. I got to wave 83 in endurance mode and it gave me yelps and I just couldn't really be bothered. So I stopped at 83 and went to claim my loot. Oh, oh I got five journal pages. Right, I've done 100. Let's loot this reward box, please. Give me my last pages. Yeah, it gave me the last four. Okay, we're good. We're sorted, we're sorted. Hmm, I had to kill 500 bosses for all from set 3, which means I actually need to do a quest for the last one. Let's go do that. Okay, so I've done Love Story Quest, which is the last fight I need for that achievement. I just need to go do Endurance Mode or something, and when I come across this one, I'll be able to kill him. There we go, we got it. We got the fight of Wise Old Man's wife or whatever. Nice and easy. Get that one done, and then that was the last boss I needed to kill. It took me 50 waves to get there, but we got there, and we needed to do waves anyway to get the bombs in order for the other achievement. You have to use all of the different power-ups and you only unlock the bombs after like 500 KC in here. So I didn't have them all yet. So hopefully I'll get them from this. And thankfully I got them from this 50. Uh, and we got all of the bombs. Nice. So now I can go use those and then I think I'm done with Dominion Tower. Yeah. We did it. And we got a new reward. So let's go see if I've done everything. There we go. We got 9,500 Dreadnips. And we got our Dominion Marker Stage 4, which is the highest. 
The hard task for the desert meant I needed to go use the dread nip on cow fight queen. Managed to do that and got the hard task done. Then I just had to finish up the elite task. I got all the achievements and the banner and stuff, but I had to make some super anti fires and things like that. And I got the elite task done too. Going around claiming all the rewards in the Desert Amulet 4 was really nice. You actually get quite a lot of XP in the lamps for the hard and the elite tasks. Like the easies and mediums don't give you much XP at all, but hards and elites do give you quite a lot of XP and it definitely adds up over time. Make sure you always claim all of your rewards because you get a decent amount of XP you can put into a slow skill. Now I had the hard task done, I had the 10% shop reduction for everything in the Mage Training Arena, so I bought Bones to Peaches for 10% cheaper. That's that comp requirement done. I then went on a big quest grind. I started off with Salt in the Wound, then I did the Gower quest. The Gower quest was very fun, that was super enjoyable. I then done Pieces of Hate, that wasn't a bad quest too. Quite an enjoyable one again. I did Crocodile Tears, that one wasn't fun at all. Followed by Our Man in the North, which was alright. I then done the hunt for the Red Rack Tuba and Fight Club. So I've unlocked the Soul Altar if I ever want to do that. I don't think I will though because I normally AFK Runecraft in Runespan. And if I was going to do Runecrafting, I'd probably do Bloods. I did some Like It Cold for some more experience and some more of the Penguin quest line done. I completed the Drunken Dwarf, Tox, Ket, Dill. Back to the Freezer. That was actually not a bad quest either. The Penguin quests are quite fun. The last thing I had to do for my quest cave was the Dwarven quest line, so I'd done a Forgiveness of a Chaos Dwarf, King of the Dwarves, and then I finished with Birthright of the Dwarves, and that was the last quest I needed, and now I have 399 quest points. There we go. I'm a cool kid now, right? Do I do I take my... Ah, uh, who needs a 120 woodcutting cave when you got quest point cave? Clear customization, chuck my quest point cave on. Ah, oh, so much better. So much nicer. I'm going to run around like this forever. I didn't have max kudos in Varric Museum, so I went to speak to the information clerk in the museum to find out what I needed to do. I only needed to do two more things because I have all quests done. I had to speak to Baby Yaga and relive some of this Tao thing. I don't really know what it's all about. It's just about her past. Then she gives you an ancient tablet thing. You take this to the Varric Museum and you get some kudos. Then I had to speak to the dude underneath Varric Museum and just tell him about the adventures and learn more about all of the quest lines and stuff. And then I completed it and had all of my kudos done. Uh, we're 63 out of 69 for comp. I need more Van Slayer challenge. The Lunar spells. Seven Livid Plants in the bank, which should be about half of the spells. Should get like five from those. So I only need to actually farm six. Need to get all the music tracks. I'm missing 29. I need to do the Myrique Memorial, which I need like one or two more days than I have all the statues. Then I need to do the Trio Storyline, which obviously I'm on the last one. And then I need to do Taskmaster. And I have loads of tasks to do, so that's what's going to take me ages. That's it for this episode of Road to Comp Peru. 63 out of 69, 6 to go. Hopefully I'll be able to comp soon and you'll see it in a video. We're actually getting super close now and it feels really good. Thanks for watching. Give it a like if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're new for loads of future content all related to RuneScape 3. And until next time, see ya.